Hi, I'm author and speaker Robin Mead. This is video one for the series Striving for Excellence. And I'm really excited about it. So today we're going to talk about the definition of excellence and also the cultural context of Philippians 4.8, which is our verse that uh, from the Bible that we're working on for this series. So let's just jump right into it. Um, when you think of excellence, what do you think of? What kind of words come to mind? Or what kind of pictures come to mind? Or what kind of people come to mind? What do you think of? So excellence is a noun and it's defined by the Oxford English Dictionary as the quality of being outstanding or extremely good. So excellence is related to the verb excel, which comes originally from a Latin word Excellere, meaning to surpass. So some synonyms, words that have similar meaning to excellence, are magnificent, distinguished, incomparable, transcendent, priceless, exemplary, peerless, distinctive, and noble, which means excellence of character. Do these words remind you of anyone? That's right, God. And um, through our progressive sancti sanctification, we are to become excellent, more like Christ. So let me just read Philippians 4, 8 to you, uh, the main text for this study. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, Whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. So let me give you a little cultural context about the Philippians. So excellence, uh, according to the Greeks, is a whole different thing than the excellence of character that Paul is talking about. So understanding the culture Paul is addressing is important for us seeing the whole picture for this verse. So through the centuries uh, and of trading with other countries, other civilizations, doing business with other civilizations throughout the Mediterranean, the ancient Greeks developed a very, very wealthy society. And because of their wealth, Greek men spent a lot of their time pondering the questions of the universe, such as who is man, why are we here, and what is the purpose of life? And the ancient Greeks developed philosophies to explain and debate these questions. And Greek culture was rich with stories about heroes, gods and goddesses, and an assortment of mythical creatures. The Greeks used these characters to um, to model their behavior after. So honor and purpose to the ancient Greek was attained through the pursuit of excellence. Uh, now the Hellenic or Greek empire extended over what we know now as Greece, of course, uh, Crete, Cyprus, Macedonia, Turkey, and other areas. So when Rome began to conquer the Mediterranean, Roman culture adopted much of the Greek way of thinking and the Greek traditions of philosophy, learning, and even the Greek gods and goddesses. The Romans gave the Greek deities and heroes Roman names. So, for example, uh, Hercules is a hero we all know. Well, in the Greek, his name was Heracles. So it's the same guy, different, uh, different name. And having legitimate generational cultural ties was so important to the Romans, one of the Roman emperors commissioned a work of literature, the Aenid, to be written to tie Roman lineage to the already forgotten city of Troy, uh, which is located in modern Turkey. So Paul is talking in Philippians to the Church of Philippi, which is actually a Macedonian city, and it is steeped in Hellenic or Greek culture. So pursuing and achieving excellence in Greek, the word is arete, A-R-E-T-E. 
uh, was thought of as the most noble of life goals. Philosophy was acted out regularly in Greek theater, and Greek men would attend the tragic and comedic plays as entertainment and then debate the way philosophy played out with the characters. So there were no good guys or bad guys in these stories. There were only heroes as they were living life and pursuing their own excellence. And in the stories, the heroes would follow a cycle of arete, which is the pursuit of excellence, and then hubris, which is arrogance or uh, arrogant behavior, and then ate, which is rash behavior, which would lead to the nemesis or downfall of the character. So the hero in the play would be at the peak of physical condition, intelligent and successful. Everyone knew who the hero was, similar to our, um, you know, professional athletes or celebrities today. And because of the hero's success as a person, uh, he would be arrogant or suffer from hubris. And after all, you know, he's at the top of his physical condition. He's at the top of his game. All the world is at his feet, honoring and worshiping him. Arrogance, a form of pride, leads to the hero to have some type of rash behavior or ate. So for Achilles, this is anger. For Odysseus, this is thinking he is smarter than everyone else and he knows everything. The rash behavior would lead to the downfall or nemesis of the hero. And this downfall uh, almost always resulted in the death of the hero. So the Greeks accepted positive behavior and negative behavior as part of the character of the hero. Heroes were not perfect and they were not expected to be perfect. In the end, the audience would determine whether the hero of the story or play achieved excellence through the reaction of the audience, uh, this reaction was called catharsis. And catharsis was achieved when the audience collectively experienced um, being emotionally moved by the hero's progress through this heroic cycle, including how he died. So they would ask, is this hero being true to himself? Was his death a fitting closure to his pursuit of excellence? So... In ancient Greece, you might hear a father say, you are a stone cutter with the excellent strength of Hercules, or, I'm sorry, Heracles, right? Hercules is Roman. Or you are a warrior with the excellent shrewdness of Odysseus. Either would have been a great compliment to the son. The Greeks equated arete, or excellence, with truth, or intellectual truth. They also connected this truth with virtue and wealth, and prominence. And we do that today, right? We assume on the on the high level that someone who is wealthy and popular is also virtuous or noble, uh, a good guy. You know, why not? Because he's got all these things, so that should reflect, you know, this this excellence in here. So those pieces of Greek culture are still with us. They're they're um, very strong. So Paul, in his uh, letter to the Philippians, he purposely used Greek culture adherence to excellence or arete to introduce Christian values for excellence to the Philippians. Excellence to the Christian is not found in the pursuit of emulating mythical heroes. Excellence to the Christian is found in habits of behavior that reflect growth and character as a result of one's faith walk, ultimately becoming more like Christ. The theological term for this character growth is progressive sanctification, being true and honorable, just and pure, lovely and commendable, excellent and worthy of praise. Notice the attributes appear in pairs, each reflects the other. If one exists, the other must also exist. So let me read to you Philippians 4, 8 again. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. 
So in the uh, Facebook group, the Be Fear study group, I've already posted a study guide. We have uh, this verse from Philippians 4.8, and there's also several other verses and asking you to go through and look at how excellence is defined in the passage. So I encourage you to do that um, because they're from all over scripture and you can see some different different places. So the first one is Psalm chapter 8 verse 1. The second one is Psalm 16 verse 3. The third one is Daniel 5 verses 11 and 12. And the fourth one is 1 Corinthians 12 verse 31 to 1 Corinthians 13 verse 8. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, there's one more. Hebrews 11 4. So go ahead and go to the Be Fierce study group on Facebook and check out the study guide for this first section of striving for excellence. And I hope this helps you reach your next level of fierce with Jesus. God bless and have a great night.